when a kid first gets here, they, they're usually kind of to themselves. They're, they're nervous, they're really nervous, a lot of them. They, they'll ask you questions when you're bringing them from intake down to the pods or to the, to the wings. You get them to read the rules, they see the kids out in the day room, they're nervous about them. They don't, the kids start asking them questions because they, they don't know how, how lax it's gonna be here, if like the DOs are gonna be on them or if the kids are gonna be on them. So they're nervous and they, they're usually just quiet or they'll, or they'll start talking to the kids and then that's when we have to intervene and be like, you need to read the rules, you need to get accustomed to that because the kids are already trying to get them in trouble. So, I mean, they're just nervous, scared. But once they get in here for about a day or two, they start to realize where they are and how it's going to be, and they adapt pretty quick, pretty quick. Wait, so they, kids try to get one another in trouble? They don't try to get them in trouble, but they know the rules already. The kid, there's a lot of the kids have been here two, three times, maybe, maybe even more. So they know, they know about the red line. They know about hands behind the back. They know all that stuff. So like. Sometimes they'll get the kids to do something that they're not supposed to do because they think it's funny. But um, we usually don't discipline that or nothing. We just tell them, make sure you read the rules. A lot of them don't want to read the rules because there's so many of them. So you got to make sure that they read the rules because they'll mess up and you'll be like, did you read the rules? They're like, yeah. I'm like, well, why'd you mess up then? And they have no idea what's going on. So that's pretty much it with that. But... What, what, what type of stuff, like when a kid Gets, I mean, he's already in detention, and it's not like if a kid gets in a fight in here um, that it's going to affect his sentence because it's really just the detention hearing and things like that. So what kind of, talk about like the discipline, what you do when kids do, you know, get in trouble. What measures do you have? Like, are you talking about a fight or, or anything? Because, I mean, there's several things they could do. Well, let's go, like, just let's start, tell me about like little stuff, like if a kid just keeps like cussing, crossing the red line. Cussing, cussing. Um, we give them warning a lot of time. A lot of times they'll be sagging, have their pants down too low, or they're talking loud or disrespectful to staff. Give them a warning if they, usually you don't even have to give them a warning. We usually go by zero tolerance and we can put them in their room right away. But we usually give them, give them, a, give them a shot at, unless, unless they keep on doing it. They've been doing it for days. Then we'll just lock them in their room, give them eight hours. None of them want eight hours. They don't want to do that because they don't know if they're going to only get eight hours. They might get 16 so that they're not going to be out for two days, so they don't, usually you give them one morning, they're done doing whatever they were doing bad. So boredom is pretty good. Yeah, you just, you tell them you can put them in their room and yeah, that's, that's the end of it right there, most of the time. Right. Yes, yeah, so talk a bit about like the veterans, the kids that have been here before, like what's their, you know, their posture when they come in or is it like- the, the kids that have been here, been here two, three times, they know what they're gonna do, they know they're gonna get showered in, they know the routine, they come in. You don't even need to usually have them read the rules. They know what's going on. So, I mean, we, know, we recognize them right away when we go to intake. We're like, man, what'd you do? Like, I violated my probation, whatnot. They know they're gonna come in here. They're gonna have to wait to court. So they come in here pretty much knowing everything. They know the kids that are in here. Um, they're not afraid about anything. Like, they know, they know if they get into a fight, they're gonna have to go to their room. That don't bother them, because they've been here so, so often that they know Eight hours ain't nothing to them. They're gonna get in, they're gonna get out, and then they're gonna be able to start all over anew. So they're not really afraid, anything like that. I mean, you obviously do this job, you know, for you know the reasons that you do. You know, everyone works in this environment. They've got us have some sort of drive to you know to help or to be a part of uh, you know the system that's to mm -hmm. hopefully get, get these kids out of this mess. So talk about how you feel when you go down to check in and intake. see a new a kid that we've seen. It's frustrating. It's just really frustrating. We see them when they when they're leaving. When we because we take them, we go get their their clothes and we tell them, "Hey, man, you know what you did wrong. Don't do it again. Go to school. Do that. It's easy to stay out of here. All you got to do is abide by the rules." And they keep coming back. It's just like, "Why? Why are you doing that?" And there's not much we can say for them because they keep saying, "I'm not going to be back this time. I'm not going to be back." Two weeks later, they're back. It's just like. It's hard to believe, you know, it's just like, why are you doing that to yourself, to your family? But they just keep doing it, and it's sad. I think for some of them, like, the structure of this place is more, feels safer. You, you know, not that they want to be here, but there's a lot of kids that probably, you know, have to share really small apartments with lots of siblings. Where mm -hmm. they, don't they know they're going to get their food, their shower, all that. What's your sense of that? Um... 
well, of course they don't like being here. They don't like being told what to do, but they adapt quick, like I said, and, and um, they know they're going to get treated. For most, most of the part, they get treated right. We respect them if they respect us. And um, I think a lot of them like having somebody to guide them and tell them what to do, even though they act like they don't. They like going to the gym with us. They like, they like talking with us, playing cards with us. They look up to a lot of us, but at the same time, they don't want to be here. But I mean, they go, they go home and then they're, 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 a lot of them are followers. So they're, they're gonna go right back to the things that they were doing. Where else are they gonna go? I mean, how, how are they gonna change if they're in a gang? How are they gonna get out of it? They're gonna have to go back to that and then they're gonna come right back here, unless you get them out of around here. I mean, they're gonna have the same group of friends, so they're always gonna get in trouble with the same group of guys, and they already got a name for themselves, so it's hard, but like a lot of the kids, you've, you've probably seen them, they're, they're good kids. Like when they're in here, they're good. You wouldn't think that they've done some of the things they've done out there, but then they do. And like I have a hard time believing some of the kids have done the things that they've done, because they're, they're good kids in here. I mean, I like them, I like a lot of the kids, and I wish they'd change their ways, but I don't know. Obviously you work with boys, but like, do you have a vibe on like, how, the, how girls' attitudes differ and things like that? Do you ever work around the girls much? Or? I mean, I see the girls a lot, but we don't really try to stay away from them, let the girls handle the girls. Um, it's just easier that way. When, you know, considering, I mean, population seems up right now. They got a lot of kids mm -hmm. in pots and stuff. But in general, when you got a full house, how many of the kids in here are people that you've seen before? Like, talk about how many newcomers you got, how many kids you never see again, and in general, the population that's here. Talk a little bit about that. You don't see many newcomers. It's, it's usually you get maybe in a month, it seems like a kid will come in, he's new. You get a lot more of the same faces coming in I mean, you see them when they're like 13, and then you're seeing them when they're 15, then they're 17, and then they're gone. They're going across the street. But it's like, it's, it's mostly the same kids coming in, coming back. And it's like, they're not afraid of coming here. I mean, it's, it's easy for them. I mean, if it's a small charge, they know they're going to be back in the streets in a couple, the, the most, most three months, they're out. So, I mean, they're not afraid of that. But like the new kids, they don't want to be here. They want to get out. and. If you haven't seen them, if they're like 15, 16 years old, you can tell that they're probably not going to come back. They, they usually don't come back. I've noticed in some of the kids that are about to age out of the juvenile system, there, there really seems to be a strong will for them. You know, they're about to potentially have their record wiped clean. You know, it's their, close, their best chance at a clean start. Do you notice the kids that are about to age out and are about to get out that there's more intent and more will than, say, a 14-year-old who doesn't, maybe isn't as keen to that? What do you mean by... Like, like they're about, they're about, they're almost done. Like, the next time they get in trouble, They're going across the street. They, a lot of them aren't afraid of that because they think they can get bonded out. They're like, well, we'll go there, bond out, and I'm, I'm free again. Explain what bond out. Like, you pay, they're, they're going to go get arrested, someone's going to set their bail, they're going to they're gonna bond out and get out. They don't understand that that's not necessarily all the case. They can be denied bail, and they might be stuck there for whatever. But a lot of them think it's better across the street than it is here. They don't realize that the food here is better. They get, they, they're guaranteed to get out of their rooms, for the most part, unless there's a bunch of fights. But it's, it's a lot easier here than across the street, and they don't know that yet. But um, they're, they're not afraid of across the street. And aren't the, the courts over here more about figuring out what a kid needs to get his act together uh -huh. in the way of services? And over there, it's like, what are we going to do to punish him? Mm -hmm. Do you think they have any? They don't have any. Well, some of them do, but it's just their, their lifestyle. They, it's, it's a badge of honor to come here or across the street. It's not. When they get out, kids, kids respect that. Their, their, their group of friends do, at least. So it's not, it's not nothing for them. When they come in, I've been here eight times. They're like, they think that's cool. It's like, it ain't nothing for me to be here eight times. I'll come back next, mo next month, I'll be out. They, they, they're not afraid, they, they think it's cool. So does that create a hierarchy in here? Like the kids look up? Like yeah, they, there's always one kid in the room who usually is the, the main kid and everybody looks up to him. And I mean, they'll, they'll challenge him, but they're not, gonna, they're not 
gonna come at him. He knows the most. He's the biggest kid or whatnot. Or they know they know who's 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 the man in the day room. That's intense. What do you find? Um, what's the most frustrating part of work? Um, mostly just seeing these kids come. It's after. Okay. Um, what's what's really frustrating is um, after you've been here for a long time, it's just sad coming here and seeing these kids wasting their life. Like you come in, and you see them playing cards. You see them getting showered. You, they get to go to the gym here and there, and they're just locked up in these cells. And it's like, when I was a kid, I thought juvenile center was a myth. I I, w I was like. I didn't believe it. I didn't, I've never heard of anyone that went. And they're really kids, 13 through 18, getting locked up and put in little jail cells. It's just like, I, it blows my mind that they can do it. Like, I wouldn't be able to do what they're doing. But these kids do it, and they're here. It's, it's for real, and it's depressing to see them in here every day. Do you, um, like, court day, Monday, or, or Mondays, I mean, they have court every day. Mm -hmm. but for the kids that are here all weekend and stuff, the kids that get nabbed on Fridays or Saturdays, is there a different feeling around here on court day? Like a lot of these kids might be going home or whatever. Well, once, once you get here in the morning, if you're working 7 to 3, the kids are already talking to each other. They know who's going to court, and they're wishing them good luck and all that. They're really positive most of the time, scared. They're asking all the deals, do you think I'm going to get out? you think I'm going to get out? We don't know. I mean, we're not the, the judge, so we don't know what's going to We can give a guess, like, if they haven't been here before and they did something trivial, like ditched school or ran away from home, yeah, they might get to go home. But, I mean, they're, they're positive for the most part when we get here and um, looking forward to court. But it can change suddenly. Once they get to court and they get detained, the kid just it's a switch in them. Like, they get depressed. Sometimes they want to fight. They don't want to be locked in their room when they get back because they know they're going to be here to the next court date. So they get, some of them get really upset about that. But I mean, when they get to go home, they're happy too, you know. So. Um, what, um, would you say majority of kids, like, you know, if you've got 30 kids here, or let's say you've got 15 kids or 20 kids with court date on Monday, do most of them get to go home, or are most of them are detained? You, you never know. It's always different. It's always different. Um, so if these kids kind of hold it as a badge of honor, they, it's a badge of honor, but they still don't want to come back, you know? No. Um, what, you know, if you have a kid that's been here a couple times, or one time, or whatever, and he leaves, what do you think the impression is once they're on the outside? Do you think it's still a bad tomorrow there? What kind of impression do you think it leaves on them having been here locked up for whether it's two days or two weeks? It really depends on the kid. I think some of them, it scares them. They definitely want to change. They, they don't want to do it. It's probably going to stick with them for a little while, and they're going to stay on the right path. But some of them, it's just, I mean, they forget real quick what, what could happen if they, they mess up again and could land them right back in here. Once you've been here once, you've got a good chance of being here again because you're in the system already. So the cops know you, it's a lot less chance of you getting off something. So like they get out, and I think it sticks with them for a little while, but the kids that have been here eight, eight nine times, they're not afraid to come back. Do the cops, I mean, the cops have a, what's the, what's your vibe on like the tolerance level with the cops? Because like you said, if you have a record and you do something, um, you're more likely to get brought in than a juvenile who maybe does the same thing, but it's never been in trouble before. Mm -hmm. Um, is that a shift, or just talk about your what, what your perception is of how the cops handle that? I don't know how they handle it, but I just it's just funny to know that the same kids keep coming in. So I mean, the cops know those kids; they know them just as well as we know them. I mean, they don't know them personally, like they don't play cards with them, go to the gym, but they see them on the street and they know that they're capable of doing this. So I mean, it's a lot more likely that they're going to get picked up than the other kid on the other side of the street. So if something happened on that street, they see two kids, one they know, it's gonna, he's got a better chance of getting picked up. So I mean, you're, you're digging yourself a hole every time you come in here. And um, it's pretty, I don't know if, that, if the cops are looking for those kids or, or what it is, I mean, I'm not a cop, so. But it seems, it's unlikely to think that the same kids are gonna come in every, every week. Right. There's always somebody that's been here coming in.